The worm watcher is a great display tool. We're finding that aquariums are using it when they go to classrooms and want to talk about composting. Um, you also can obviously use it as an independent learning center. It has a side on the side where you can lock it so people can lock and leave, which is always great if, whether you're in a classroom or a nature center or an aquarium setting. Um, we want to just show you a few things to make the composting demonstration a lot more meaningful. First is we would like people to bury their garbage along the sides. Along here you might see something here that looks a little different than the rest of the soil. That's where we've buried some food. When you bury food along the sides, of course, that encourages the worms to go to the sides. The skirt is on the outside, primarily because worms live underground. And so that encourages them to come to the sides. But honestly, you're going to see worms moving throughout your worm watchers. Do not panic. These are red wiggler worms. They do not drown like the ones you see on your sidewalk. Um, and they often will, you'll see them going down and even taking a swim, which is also kind of fun. So definitely take observations in all kinds of weather. They tend to go to the sides during strange weather events like hurricanes or snowstorms. You'll often see them, you lift up the skirt, you'll see them all along the sides, even along your rooftop, the ceiling itself. A quick word about safety. We always recommend using gloves, simply because if you have cuts in your hands or fingers that you can't see that obviously uh, can't introduce germs. So to be on the safe side, we always say, why don't you just use gloves when you play in the dirt? Like any, your mother always tells you, wash your hands with soap and water. So we always recommend using gloves and washing your hands with soap and water afterwards. Here comes the exciting day. The day you get to open up your bin and really check it out. Now, depending on how often you're feeding your warm watcher, we tend to recommend bearing your food about every four to five days, maybe once a week, depending on how much food you have. Um, you're, we suggest having a designated worm watcher, a person who's kind of in charge of burying the food. So they're aware of where the food is buried, because that's the number one rule is you always want to bury your food. So here comes the day. This is a compost bin that's been around for about four to six weeks. You're going to see worm castings, which is the worm poo, all throughout your worm watcher, because they've been up and crawling around, and of course eating the food and leaving their castings. So. Here we go. It's, if you like mysteries, this is the fun part, okay? You'll see worm castings, as you can see, all along the sides. And we have the wet newspaper on top. Some people like to add dirt on top of this as well, just to kind of make sure their food is buried. But when you start peeling back your newspaper, often you're going to find worms that have been playing up the ground, because often they mate at the top. There we are. They're usually mating on top of your bin. So you peel back your bin, and as you can see, we have been, we've buried quite a bit of different types of food. My favorite food for demonstration purposes is a melon. This has been in here four to five days. You will see that the worms, of course, in it, and it's actually so decomposed, it's really like a sheet of paper. Okay, typically when you do this, you can lift it up and see a nice ball of worms. Now, depending on this, you can see up to 500. Of course, there's some worms there that have been mating. And look at this. This is from three to four or five days ago. The paper, the watermelon rind is now like a sheet of paper. All right, let's see what else we discover in the bin. And again, it's not, another thing we like recommending is burying a pumpkin and putting a hole in the bottom. And the worms often, if you could see it there, there's a few worms here. As this decomposition process happens, you can even find a whole ball of worms inside a pumpkin, which is also fun when you're demonstrating. So when you're about to do a demonstration, say, in a classroom, we recommend putting something in. And you know, as you get a feel for the composting process, you want to give it four to five days and then pull it out and see how the worms are doing, if they're decomposing. It might take up to two weeks, like something in a pumpkin's case takes a lot longer as far as decom decomposing. But as you start decom checking out your bin, you're going to get a feel for exactly what's going on. Notice these sprouts. Again, worm castings is so high in nitrogen, which is great for students and everyone to see that this is not like ordinary dirt. This is very, very nutritious. Um, it's odorless, it does not smell, and you're going to see the entire life cycle of a worm. 
What I want you to keep an eye out is for worm cocoons. A worm cocoon you can see on my website and here's a shot of one as well. A worm cocoon contains up to 10 eggs and they find on average about three hatch. So you'll see your worm population grow as, as your worms are happy and I've never met a worm I don't like and happy worms are healthy worms. You'll just enjoy seeing your population of worms explode. All right, now in this bin, as we dig, you're going to see some other melons. Look how many worms are in here. Okay, here we go. And here's an apple. You'll see that the worms are eating on all the different sides of the apple. And of course, there's other things that are working on it as well. This apple has been in here for about a week but you will see all ages in and out of the melon itself and leaving its castings behind. Here you find another melon. Again, look how thin it is. And check out that worm just eating the size and breaking it down even further. It's really miraculous when you start looking in a bin and seeing what worms are doing. And as you can see, this is a worm that's semi pretty mature. That's the clotellum. They're really not sure quite biologically what that does. Um, that, doesn't, that isn't necessarily the reproductive organs. They're located farther behind on the worm. There's over 3,000 species of worms. These are red wigglers, which are your best worms in terms of being able to tolerate the wide ranges of pH, wetness, moisture, and temperature. So you always want to compost, if possible, with red wiggler worms. Now, of course, you can order your worms from us or from your local bait shop, but you're going to probably find that when you're ordering half pounds of worms, which is about approximately 500 worms, that it's pretty more economical to get it from a worm farmer or worm vendor rather than your local bait shop. This is one of my favorite things to see when you look in a bin, and this is cantaloupe. As you can see, worms love cantaloupe, but they don't like the netting. So as this even get, it'll be go finer and finer, and pretty soon it's going to look like lace. So that's a very fun demonstration if you have a chance to do that with your students. One of the best ways to demonstrate the word watcher is to let your compost bin um, not be fed for about four or five days, and then add a melon or squash and leave it overnight. The next morning, Dig into your bin, and you will see a ball of worms where your squash or melon was buried. This actually was an acorn squash, and you can see hundreds and hundreds of worms. And then the students go, wow, awesome. <laughs> Notice in this bin that you're going to see that most of the newspaper has, been, been, has disappeared. We put newspaper in our bins primarily to provide air pockets, also to absorb any odors. So as, but as you see, as the weeks progress, the, the paper disappears. So as we refresh our bins, which we recommend about every six to eight weeks, you're going to go ahead and take out half of your castings, move everything to the side, and put in fresh newspaper to mix into your bin. And of course, you might even need to take out some of your worms. You might have a huge family going on in here, and you might decide to use your worms in other bins. Some people like to put them in their garden. Uh, red wigglers are not, it, it turns out, worms are, have been introduced to the United States, so you're not introducing a foreign animal into your bin, into the environment. But some people like to put them in the bin, into their gardens. Red wigglers tend to live between 40 and 80 degrees according to scientific literature, but you might find that they live a lot longer. We've heard a lot of reports of red wigglers overwintering in the winters around 30 degrees. And we've also heard of them living outside and outside in, the, in certain bins around 85 degrees as long as they're not in direct sunlight and they've had good wind around their bins. So you can do your own science experiments with the worm watcher. You can figure out whether they prefer coffee or tea, fruits or vegetables, veggies or junk food, um, the possibilities with the worm watchers are unlimited. A lot of folks now are taking experiments with the worm castings and comparing it with, say, miracle Grow type of soil or basic, basic cow manure or basic topsoil and comparing the differences and seeing the growth processes. 
a lot of other science teachers now are just experimenting with the worm tea, which has been an exciting new organic fertilizer that is showing some very promising results. Um, to get worm tea in the worm watcher, we recommend when your bin is looking pretty much decomposed, like you could easily do it right now, when it's convenient, you're going to take a cup of water and pour it over your worm castings and let it drain through. When you're ready to harvest your tea, you're simply going to use up your spigot. After you drain your water, you want to harvest it within four to five hours and put it in your garden. Dilute it up to ten times and then put it on your plants and enjoy. You've just given it a natural vitamin, which your plants will totally enjoy, and minerals. So have your fun experimenting with the worm tea and feel good about not wasting any of your great vegetable scraps.